Alrighty, today I'm going to show you a quick tip on how to make a watercolor background. And here's a couple examples of it. Um, I needed one. I didn't see how to do watercolor, so I thought I'd try a couple different stuff. And this is kind of what I ended up with. And this can be used for another drawing as a background or animation. And that's what we're going to make real quick. So we'll start off with a new project. And uh, first thing we're going to do is paint on it. And we're going to uh, use a big brush. And I like to use uh, something with a furry, fuzzy edge so it's not, not clear and defined. And here it is right here. It's a little round middle brush. And here I've already got a pastel color in my top layer um, and then I can you know, change the bottom layer to something else so later I can switch. But right now it's going to be the top layer and just uh, also too on this paintbrush I've got the opacity down to like 58.8 because we don't want any real hard edges we don't want anything like real paint we want it to be like a watercolor so just uh, just you know, do some marks there, change the color, do some more, um, change the color again, let's put some different strokes and stuff in there, and, and again, this is for just kind of like a cloudy uh, background, I needed one that was kind of moody, and uh, that's why I used kind of pastel and I used darker ones as well. All right, so now we got it kind of full here. Um, let's do one more. Yeah, let's do this one. Let's do this one. Um, all right, so there we go. Good enough. So now that you kind of just took a big paint brush and painted a bunch of different pastel colors over here we are going to use a filter and we're gonna go and use the artistic one and here's where I would expect to find a watercolor for one but that it wasn't so there's oil fi and oil fi just kind of makes it look like an oil painting and you can change the, uh, the mask size to maybe add a little more different definition to it. There you can see that. Not a whole lot of change, but it's it's what we want to do. So I hit OK and you can see it it's working here. It's doing its uh, pixelation job. Alright, so I kind of you know, defined it a little bit, made made it kind of spill into the other colors a little bit. After we do the, the, the um, oil fi, we're going to do a, uh, a noise. So I'm just going to pick the noise generator. And on the poison, poison, I just used two. On the gaussian, I used like around 27. Uniform, uh, 28. And you can just slide these around and see what it does. It's, you know, it's all a matter of playing around and seeing what you get. I wanted something a little more uh, choppy. I didn't do anything with the Lorenz, the Laplace. I had 16. And uh, again, you can click here and then slide this around to kind of preview on what it's going to be like. And add that noise. Processing. All right, now that we've got it all oily, we are going to go back to the oilify. And the oilify on top of the noise is going to make it kind of bleeding, if you will. Let's turn the mass size down. Yeah, so see how it's kind of starting to look like a watercolor now? 
and the exponent I've got on 7, you can play around with that too. Hit OK. And there you go. It's kind of looking waterish now. For the final thing you're going to do to uh, make it watery looking is add a blur. And I like to go here to the Gaussian because you can change the numbers. I found 7 to work pretty good. If you do a, a lower number, it'll be, of course, less blurry. If you do a higher number, it'll be more blurry, and then it starts to look just more blurry. But I, I like 7 for the effect I'm looking for. All right, so let's hit OK. And there you go. You've got kind of a watercolory type background. And you've seen this type of artistic uh, thing in, in animations and cartoons as used as a background. Just something to kind of give it color, but not any distinctive uh, you know, properties or assets. Maybe like uh, the bokeh of photography or something. And another thing, if you you got that all done, you can now change the lightness. So you know, change the, the whole mood of the thing. You can change the hue. You can change the saturation. You can blow it out. You can gray it down for more of a somber, spooky type thing. I would do, you know, a little darker and less saturation. Something like that. So there you go. And that's it. That's that's basically it. And then you can play around, do even a little more. You can uh, take the eraser in a big size, the opacity down to around 11. If you, if there's something like, hey, you say, ah, oh, it's a little too dark, a little too contrasty, it's taken out. You know, you can just kind of erase that, just real low opacity. And you can just change your whole mood, your whole background setting. And then, uh, I mean, you could redo it. You could come back here to the paintbrush and say, well, I need some red in there. Let me, let me do some red. And uh, just start over again. Just start doing everything that you did before. Just uh, Go to filters, artistic, oil fi. Filters, noise, noise generator. And it left the same sentence I had in there for before, so I'm just going to hit OK. There we noised it again. Now we go back. Do the oil fi again. You can make a bunch of these real quick. That is if your machine's not too old. And then for the final thing, I mean, if you want it sharp like this, you, I mean, you can keep it that way, but the, the blur kind of makes it look more watery. And there you go. And that's a little quick tip on how to do watercolor backgrounds in GIMP.